Hello friends, Jennifer Pearson here, Thistle Gypsy, with, <clears throat> well, I could boldly claim that this will be my last deck of the year, but, you know, <laughs> this was uh, the last of the ones that I had on order that I was expecting to come. Um, whether I will fall prey to temptation and purchase something on Amazon later this year, I don't know. But, um, but yeah, here it is, the Tarot of Trees. And this is the book you're looking at here. And it is by Dana Driscoll. So the, um, the deck comes in a box like this. It is a big deck, which when I purchased it, I didn't realize. <laughs> um, but I was definitely going FOMO on this fear of missing out because it had been out of print and I was really attracted to it um, and now and then and I didn't realize it was going to be a large their 10th anniversary edition but there was a note that came with this these two things came together in a package um, <clears throat> and thanking me for my support and asking that I hashtag this. So let's hope I remember to do that. Um, as in any kind of featuring of the deck. Um, <clears throat> and then it has project up updates. We still have some of the original paintings available, so let us know if you are looking for one. Also, in early 2021, we will be getting a reprint of our small pocket edition as well. That's what I wanted. <laughs> Or what I needed. I'm, I'm thinking at any rate. Um, I'm going to try this um, once we get in there and I show you. The cardstock is not super heavy, which is great because it's such a large deck. Um, so I haven't tried to shuffle it yet because I wanted to show it in order. Um, but I'm, I'm anxious to see how it shuffles. It might shuffle quite fine, and if it does, then I don't know that I need the pocket edition. But uh, I was a little worried when I found out this was a large edition that it would not be very shuffleable. Um, so, so it's the original, the pocket edition is the original size of 2.5 by 3.5 um, and then it gives a sign up and I will try to show that here where it says www slash tarot of trees dot com slash mailing dash list all right So, when it came in the mail, this all came, and this box was in this slip cover. Nice protective um, aspect. It was also heavily wrapped. It was wrapped in bubble wrap, and then it was also heavily wrapped in um, a form of paper. So, they, they went to a lot of trouble to make sure that it would arrive without any dings or damage to the box. Um, the book a little less so, but um, it arrived in good shape as well. And I will maybe go into the book. I mean, there's plenty on each page with a full color um, edition of the card. I'm really looking forward to digging into this. Um, when I did the first flip through, there, there are some that are a little pippish or that kind of refer back more to um, Marseille, actually, and some of them seem to be sort of their own thing. But uh, I'm really happy to have a tree deck because I have a tree oracle, so I wanted a tree tarot. Um, yeah, and this again is by Dana Driscoll. This um, webcam renders things a little bit on the blue side, 
this is more of it's green than blue kind of a dusky green that's obviously the backings again they are large cards large cards and i have I don't know, I suppose for a woman I have a large hand. Um, gilding, there were only like two cards that stuck, so it's kind of that antique gold kind of a gilding. It smells like a new deck. So I'm just going to walk us through it's funny, I can't even explain why I particularly like this art, <laughs> but I do. When I first saw it, I thought, that's the tree deck. I don't even know if there are other tree um, tarot decks, but this was the one for me. Even so, it's not like I get all elements of each of the cards. Like, I'm not sure why the Magician card is red. Um... I'll be curious to see if it enlightens. We've got pomegranates, you know, the tree resting on the moon. A lot of the trees are leafless, and so that's interesting too. I haven't thought too much about that. but um, And I haven't checked in the guidebook, but I'm pretty sure that once we get into the suits, the, um, the miners at least in the winter. I guess it wasn't completely pines. Now here's the wands appear to be pine trees. But no, there's no... No, I thought in the, the swords were pines. It's the wands that are pines. Um, but I think I was looking for something <laughs> that maybe isn't there. And I'm just going to walk you through. So again, the cardstock is fairly bendy. Not super, but it's not also not super stiff. So I'm cautiously optimistic. It's a pretty thick deck. But I'm cautiously optimistic that it will shuffle once we get done here. And I'll pull a card to... Um, just to go to the guidebook and, and read read how that reads. And, you know, going through this really helped me understand what a challenge it was to use inanimate trees to indicate activity, you know, to render a scene, so to speak. Um, with uh, something that doesn't move or can't be depicted as moving within the context of a card, unless you add some special lines. So this tree is inverted. You've got leaves down here. And then the roots are in the air, which of course look like branches. That's part of part of the magic of trees, right? Um, So usually when I do these sorts of things, I do a lot of yakking, but I'm just not inclined to do that. So I'm just going to show you, slowly show you the cards. And they're large enough that I don't have to, you know, move them up. I think you can see them fairly well. I think this is a beautiful star card.
judgment. That's a, a little acorn that's bursting open. I suppose you could see the rain as what is the angel calling it. It's interesting in some of these cards you can see the trees kind of as a force of nature. And then you can see them, like when we get to the pentacles, you can kind of see them holding the pentacles. As though, you know, the pentacles, thinking of the pentacles as stones. So to me, this has a very different, and I would have to look at a, like a Marseille to see if there's any indication of this kind of, it's kind of like a water ladder here, um, going from water flowing from one cup to another cup to another cup, and then onto the ground. And this is being kind of heart-shaped here. So I don't know if this is taking after Marseille or not. So there are just some really interesting ways to reinterpret So this is another one. It's like, well, this must have like a totally different meaning, or it, it does to me, from certainly a Rider Waite Smith point of view. And this is very different in the sense that it is shaped like a woman. I don't know if there are any other trees that that take on a human shape at all in this deck. And there are actually, I counted them at the very top, this top crown area here, there are 10 leaves. So yeah, it's really hard to, again, this would normally be motion, right? Riding, movement. I mean, the nights are about movement. And so it's, it's quite difficult. I, re I respect the challenge of attempting to depict the Knight of Cups. And the only way that I would, I mean, they might be attempting with the flow of the branches, you know, but I think just being told it's the Knight of Cup is, Cups is the only way that I would know that it was. And the Queen is just very interesting, the way she decided to do this. And if you turn it upside down, this looks like a vase shape to me. So it's, it's interesting. And 
and I can also respect this, you know. Wands, normally the whole suit would be trees, so in a deck of trees, how do you distinguish the suit of wands? Um, so again, just respect for that challenge. So in the cups, you had cups in the picture, and here I guess you will ha not have anything but the trees. Um, and in the swords, you have swords, and in the pentacles, you have pentacles. So in the suit of wands, you don't have anything but the trees. <coughs> Themselves being the wands, of course. such an interesting six of wands because <clears throat> you know the tree looks like it's been manipulated or cut several times I mean it's something has made it twist here and this sort of thing usually comes when something has been trimmed like it's been trimmed all here and yet still it's growing and thriving This is also very interesting for a Seven of Wands because clearly the forest has been cut here in order to build houses. And there are seven trees left, sort of guarding, guarding the entrance to the wilderness. So this Nine of Wands, you know, is very reminiscent of the Six that we saw, although it's not thriving so much. Maybe gives the impression of being too divided to really thrive. And then, of course, this is very Marseille. <laughs> um, this Ten of Wands. But there's an interesting protective aspect of, you know, the seed that's coming up there, which we normally wouldn't see like in a Rider Waite Smith Ten of Wands. Yeah. That is so, I mean, this to me is kind of amusing. The Knight of Wands actually growing in the road. <laughs> we have our black cat and we have our flowers for the queen. And so this is really interesting for the King of Wands, obviously a very mature tree, just like with the Knight of, or the King of Cups appeared to be a very, an older, mature tree. But the fact that this has an opening here So I'll be curious if this is, this kind of remains the case with the other two. So on the on the King of Cups, you had some growth, like plant growth on the branches. So, and I almost said this when I saw it, you know, it's, 
it is the king is supporting other life. And here again, you have this hole where something might live. Um, and so the king is supporting other life. And I, again, I appreciate the difficulty in terms of thinking about swords in trees because swords, similar to axe, you know, I would, you know, be inclined to think that that is the enemy of a tree. And here, clearly it is. It's stunting the growth and this looks very bonsai and I think that's appropriate. Quite a number of the trees in this deck ended up looking kind of bonsai because of the challenges they've encountered and their attempts to grow despite them. The Three of Swords. So here the tree appears to be resting. <laughs> And this is interesting too because it has a tower aspect in that this jagged uh, rift in the tree where it broke off indicates it was either lightning, similar to the tower, or maybe wind uh, would make more sense, you know, that the wind snapped it. Um, this being, of course, the suit associated with air. And the six, I would only know it's the six just from the... I mean, there are six trees, but, but you know, having the water there. I wonder if all of the swords are down. Are all of the swords down? The ace is up, all of the others so far, the, the, they're in the ground or downward. The seven of swords would have to come up with a different meaning than traditionally. You know, normally too, there's the division in the Rider Waite Smith between the five swords and the two swords left behind, and there's uh, none of that here, numerologically. I don't know if there's anything happening here that I'm missing. So again, I respect the challenge <laughs> of trying to depict these things, but I, I confess I found it quite amusing to have, you know, a quote-unquote blindfold here. Now, when I looked in the guidebook, they indicated that this tree, this tie on this tree, because they do that, it's usually plastic and colored, or they mark it with paint. Um, actually, I think the paint is even more common, that this tree has been marked for cutting. So that's where the, the trapped aspect comes in. The Nine of Swords and the Ten. So we kind of have some different, you know, the death card was being cut off 
whereas this is you know it was uprooted similar to what happens um, again when the wind will topple a tree um, trying to think if there are other situations in which the tree falls over and is uprooted like that. So there's this semblance of blood, which is a little awkward in association to trees, but this I would think of as sap. And so it can be thought of, you know, that, that, that these swords were put in the tree while it was still upright and caused enough damage to the system of the tree. Because when you're harvesting sap, you only have, I think, one place where you're taking the sap out. So it's totally sapped. <laughs> it's sapped out and collapsed. And so I find this a little bit amusing too. <laughs> the tree holding the sword. So this one is upward. This one is upward. But this one is again, once again back downward. And this one is upwards, the Queen of Swords. And again, that the tree is holding it. And there's all this stuff down here, which doesn't look like ground. Well, of course, she is known for having her sword above the clouds, the clouds being down below her um, throne. So maybe that's what this is intended to indicate. And here we have a reference to Arthur and the sword in the stone with this tree preparing to, I suppose, take the sword out of the stone. So here we are into pentacles and already we have a tree. So I'm surprised actually that um, the makers didn't, I mean, I'm not the only one who associates pentacles with seeds. And so I'm a little surprised that the ace of pentacles wasn't a seed, an acorn, uh, something along that line. Again, very um, Marseille-ish, or, and, is it, I can't remember if it's, um, in the deck I can never remember the name of anymore, the Thoth. So this I find a little strange. I don't know that I have ever run into trees doing quite this. So of all of the different representations of trees, I think this is the only one that takes me out of treeness because trees can be very, you know, they can you know, I, this is believable to me, and growing up around things, roots grabbing things. But this doesn't look like roots. I mean, it looks like the blue of the sky, and somehow they've formed together like that. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like that. Um... This appears to be winter, which is interesting. And I could still think of this as seeds, even though it's exaggerated. You know, think of um, trees that 
manage to hold on to their seeds kind of until the springtime and then let them go. This is a great representation of the Six of Pentacles. So it's interesting that the Pentacles seems to be very wintry. Is it entirely? Winter and night sky. So holding on, yeah. I think that is not common. Let me see if all of the skies in the swords are kind of red and autumnal. So the swords are autumn. And the pentacles are winter. Looks like the wands maybe are summer. So are the cups spring? That's fairly traditional, I think. I don't know that there's anything. Well, there's the flowers. There are more flowers in the cups. So I could see how they might be seen more as spring. It has to do with the skies. So in the um, in the cups, the sky is green. In the wands, it's blue. In the um, in the swords, it's red. And here, it's a, a dark blue, like it's all winter winter nights, as opposed to the blue sky of um, of the wands. So very interesting. Holding on to those seeds. But I do, I don't know, become a little bit confused when, when they aren't. Like this I could see holding on to the seeds. For, you know, you're holding on for the springtime because it's winter. But now, again, there's, now there's like an implication of human activity laying these things down here in a path. And so that's, that confuses me. And then there was another one where there, look, the pentacles appeared to be stones within a stream. Nine of Pentacles. And of course, trees do hold on to rocks and stuff in there. One of the fascinating things when they do upend is to see how they've grown around and are holding on to rocks and things like that. And it's still winter, there's still snow right here. And then the Ten of Pentacles. And while the packed aspect of these um, pines creates a sense of community, again, these the pentacles just sort of randomly put in there is um, well, I don't know, a little awkward, um, but only. As I point these things out, I mean, it's not a criticism of the whole deck. Again, I certainly respect the challenges that had to be overcome. Um, and when things stand out as looking a little awkward or, or a little confusing, it's because the rest of the deck really did a great, a great job of doing a tree deck <laughs> and making it, you know, making it make sense. Um, and I love these, 
these nightish, dark, wintry skies here that are really cool. This tree almost looks like it's on the moon. So there's the page. The Knight of Pentacles, interesting. We're all, I hope, uh, have experienced that kind of avenue where the trees go over and kind of shelter it. Or appear at any rate to be sheltering it. So kind of the sheltered way. Queen. Again, that aspect of sheltering. And the king. So, with the other kings, I don't know if I had that with the king of swords. I don't know if that would be possible with the king of swords. So the first two, the cups and the wands, you know, there was the sense of supporting other life. But to me, that's not the case here, and it's not the case here. I'm not entirely certain what to think of that. So I'll have to, I'll just have to read the guidebook and see what her take is on these different things. Beautiful extra card regeneration. And another beautiful extra card called Roots. So there is the beautiful Tarot of Trees. So let's see. I'm guessing I'm going to have to do a side shuffle. And that's, that's not bad. It, the cards aren't very bendy. It's kind of, I'm kind of doing more of a corner shuffle. You know what, I don't have very strong hands. I don't know if I could even, and again, I'm, I've got pretty big hands, and I can barely, you know, I had to take up Can I split it again? I don't think I would shuffle it this way because my hands are just too... I think it's causing too much of a strain on my hands. My hands are not... Uh, not happy hands. So yeah. Again, really the best best way to go is the corner. So I'm just going to split the deck here. Let's read from the guidebook. Oh, just my luck. I've got the tower. I might, um, I'll read from the tower. But that's a pretty traditional tower, except that the tree looks like it's pushing the tower over. <laughs> it looks like it's helping. Um... But I might also try uh, to get one of the cards, flip through until I come to a minor arcana. The tower comes crashing down, brought to the earth by powerful elements. Although the storm is raging, the tree, new life, has already begun to take root and grow. But nature has not yet healed the crumbled tower. Much work is left to do. So that's an interesting impression of what that tree is. Um, so apparently it had begun to crawl up <laughs> onto the tower before the tower was struck useless. Meaning, brick by brick, piece by piece, we build for ourselves illusions, walls, fortresses, and boundaries. We set ourselves up high in towers of belief and certainty. 
What we think was once well constructed can come crashing down around us at any moment, especially when built on shaky foundations. The tower represents the crashing point, the moment of truth when everything we thought we knew is wrong. It represents the false illusions and beliefs that we are suddenly able to see through and understand for what they are. The tower can be experienced through unexpected occurrences, deliberate actions, or even changes in worldview. It is often destructive, violent, or traumatic. But not all that the tower provides is negative. The destruction of the tower leaves us in a, new, a unique position to have great clarity, new vision, and revelation. Once the dust settles, something new, something better, can be built in the tower's place. So fairly traditional meaning. So let's see if we can find a minor. Here's a court. Maybe we could do a court. But let me see. Um, that's a pretty traditional nine. I'm going to look for one that's a little less traditional and see. We have two nines in a row here. So that kind of mimics, I might use that nine. A beautiful star card. And there's our king. So we're going to use some wands here, I think. Beautiful moon. Magician. That seven of pentacles to me is fairly traditional. Let's try a knight. Let's try this knight of cups and maybe the nine of wands. Looking for ones I didn't quite get. I think this is one of those decks that the more familiar you are with it, the more it's like, yeah, yeah, I see how that works. I think I might do... So a lot of them do work, but I might do the three of wands. The wands are coming up. So let's do the Knight of Pentacles, or excuse me, of Cups. The Knight of Cups reaches out boldly with his golden cup in hand. So apparently, you know, sometimes the, the meaning is going to personify the tree. And sometimes not, because the Queen of, Su of Cups just says, a cup grows in perfect balance and harmony within her branches, a golden cup of spring water overflows. To me, that's different than the Knight of Cup reaches out boldly with his golden cup in hand. To me, that's, those are two different levels of personification of the tree. And I'm assuming it's a, a pretty standard meaning for the Knight of Cups. I'll read a little bit of it. The Knight of Cups, like all of the knights in the, tar in the tarot, has both positive and negative qualities. On the positive t card, this positive side, this card reflects sensitivity, romanticism, or introspection. This may refer to someone who is often aware of others' feelings and values them, asking others to respond deeply to that which life brings. Um, so yeah, it's still pretty classic Knight of Cups. So we're going to try the Three of Wands. Three trees. So we have three trees here. Look out upon a beautiful valley below. Together their roots work to hold back the earth in the hillside in which they grow. So to me that's a different action than we would have in a typical Three of Wands. Erosion prevention is their task in progress and it has paid off thus far. So to me that is more a card of 
you know, taking some risk, but the goal is stasis. It's not moving on like it would be in a traditional Three of Wands or a Rider Waite Smith Three of Wands in any case. Um, how they see this melding with a traditional Three of Wands is thus. The Three of Wands is about the path to successful plans and ventures. This is a card of progress or milestones. You are approaching your goal, but the task is not yet complete. So their goal is to stop the erosion on the hillside. This card may demonstrate the need for help from a group, possibly a group of three. So much is left to do and others can help can help you in that task. Sometimes the Three of Wands is about exploring the unknown, seeking out uncharted waters, taking on something new or different. So now she's talking about a more traditional three. Okay. So even where she kind of goes, creates a different meaning for the card, she's apparently going to present the um, the more traditional one as well. So let's see what she has to say about the nine. A tree continues to grow successfully despite having been knocked over by a fallen dead tree. Okay, so that's what this is. Um, Although the tree is forever changed by being bent to the, crown, by, to the ground, it has not broken. It has adapted and it continues to grow strong. So let's see how that's different from the six, which looks very similar. So this essentially has been bowed down by an accident, another tree having fallen and bowing it down. So let's see the six of wands, which was very similar. Um, six wands in the form of branches grow upward and outward from the gnarled tree. Strife and struggle have been overcome and a unified victory is attained. So they are, they are very similar. Of course we can add whatever, um, meanings we see um, to, to what she is providing. So let me look at, I'm going to look at her explanation for this, which I really wasn't quite getting. So here she says, three trees grow inward. each linking with the other's branches to hold fast to the three pentacles. So, all right, so I guess I'm laying, this is what this is, I'm laying on the ground, looking up like this tree is rooted here, this tree is rooted here, this tree is rooted here, and the branches are somehow coming together and joining. Which, you know, they can be trained to do that. They wouldn't do that naturally. <laughs> and I, I was thinking that, I, I was a little bit, you know, there are some places where like that eight of pentacles that sh showed what looked to me like a pathway and there are occasionally roads indicated and and stuff. I, I'm a little surprised that, that she didn't incorporate the idea of lattices and how people will grow trees on lattices or even hedges. Um, you know, people, I mean, my understanding is that in the English countryside, you have 
you know, like ancient hedges. Um, and they are trees that would normally have grown to full size, but have been constantly worked and trimmed to, to, be, to interleave and be a hedge. But um, I'm not aware of us doing that here in the U.S. I don't know if there are any hedges that have been created that way. We tend to have uniform um, hedges of certain types of trees that lend themselves to that. But, um, or shrubs, actually, that lend themselves to that. So here it is, the, the glorious tarot of trees um, that will take a little bit of steady on my part. Some people might get all of this like instantly out of out of the box. I get most of it um, and I'm very happy to have it but I confess it will take a little bit of steady to get into the mindset and I'm not even um, feeling all that worried at this point, having gotten some good shuffles out of it. I'm, I'm not at all worried about the fact that it is larger. Um, the, you know, whether I will get the smaller version is a question because obviously with this huge version, doing, you know, multiple cards in a spread becomes problematic. So I don't know. I don't know. But it's a, a beautiful deck. Again, I'm very glad to have um, a tree tarot to go with my tree oracle so that when I feel so inclined, there they are, the two, I can do tree readings <laughs> that incorporate both tarot and oracle. So how fun is that? All right, everybody. Take care, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.